I want to kind of take you guys through just a real quick version of kind of my creative process when I make things like this, clocks or whatever it might be. What the customer gave me is exactly what you see here. I cleaned it up, of course, a little bit. This windmill was from the family's friend. Uh, it was her grandpa's and it was the only thing that she had left from her grandpa and she wanted to kind of restore it but still keep it look kind of old. But what they really wanted was to make this into a clock. Easy enough except if you have a windmill with this giant steel bearing to where the windmill spun on its original axis. So what, I, what I've come up with is I will still keep the original, the original size, of course, and the look. I'm going to paint this, but I'm going to keep it very similar with the silver and the aged look. That's my thought process on all this. It might change, but that was the beginning thoughts that I had and to make this into a clock. So my next steps are I got to cut this out and I got to create the wood insert to go into this. And then I also need to take all these fins and get them welded back on there, make the new fins and give this a quick coat of paint and try to age a little bit. So I'll check back with Dina after I get a little farther. So I have my pattern here from the fin that I traced before I weld them all on here. I've traced this onto this piece of scrap metal I have. It's not quite big enough, um, but I'm gonna make it work. The piece that I'm gonna cut off of here, I'm gonna try to weld on there, grind it down, hide that so you can't see it, and they'll be able to put that last fin on there, and then we're ready to move on to building the clock part. All we got left to do is, I'm gonna mark this hole to drill out. We're gonna take this steel rod and make the connecting pieces that are missing. We're gonna weld that on there. We gotta put a little bit of a bend in here to match the bend in the rest of the blades. We're ready to weld this up and start priming. So I got a quick coat of primer on here, but now it's time to cut this middle part out so we can get the clock assembly put in there. I wanted to leave this step for last just to keep everything assembled, I guess, as, as possible and keep it as sturdy as possible, but we're at the point where we gotta get it cut out. So these are the old boards that I cut up to make a clock face. Um, I cut them in smaller strips, so I'm going to kind of replicate the look of shiplap, sort of. Um, we're gonna break over these edges, put a small chamfer on there, do a little bit of a distressing on each individual board so they look like individual boards when we get finished. Do the distressing, do a couple layers of stain, glue these bad boys together, cut them in a circle and ready to put them in the clock.
All right, so I got a little ahead of myself. Um, I need to be able to resaw the face of this off of here, and my bandsaw will only resaw six inches. So this is obviously more than six inches. So what I'm gonna have to do is what I just glued together. I'm gonna cut in one of these seams, make this into two pieces, resaw the two pieces, and then glue everything back together, and hopefully that'll work out like I want it to. We'll see here in just a minute. Okay, so we resawed those panels. I think it's gonna work fine. The panels held together fine, even though they're really thin. It did a, a really nice cut. It's nice and flat. I'm gonna be able to glue these back together and you will never know that I even cut those in half. And this is gonna make our next step of cutting the clock base a lot easier. It's still in one piece. All the numbers cut out perfect. All we gotta do is glue these two pieces in there. And then we're gonna take this piece carefully, glue it back onto the original thicker piece. And then we're gonna be able to fill our epoxy in our little wooden molds here and have our clock face. Mm. It's a good brush. 